In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen, Father. Why did God not redeem the fallen angels, but yet chose to redeem us? The fathers of the church conjecture that one third of the angels, one third of the angels that were created, fell. After one mortal sin, each of them fell into, into hell for eternity. They were given no second chance. Why then did God not save them? And he came down to earth, made himself man, and died in agony to save us. But the angels whom fell, he had no pity on. We can look at four different reasons why he came to save us and not the fallen angels. Firstly, the angels had a greater clarity. The gravity of the sin is not often measured by the sin itself, but by the one who sins. And the angels, having a higher intellect than men, having, a, having knowledge of, of God, his perfections, when they sinned against God, they saw the mighty offense that it was to sin against God. And they saw all the consequences that came from that sin yet they still chose to go against him. Adam obviously was created with a high intellect, but lesser than that of the angels. They were both guilty, but the angels more so. Secondly, man was tempted. In the Garden of Eden, they were tempted by the serpent, by one of a higher intellect of them. The fathers say that if Adam and Eve had been left to themselves, they probably would not have sinned. But because of the temptation, they were deceived and they fell. Whereas with the angels, each one of them had a deliberate will against God. Those that fell chose to go against God. Thirdly, every single one of us have the, wound of, the wounds of original sin. We have original sin in our soul. Millions upon millions of human beings after Adam are suffering for a sin they did not commit themselves, but that they inherited from Adam. We are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Whereas with the angels, each angel was created individually by God. They do not generate in the same way that men generate. Each, each one of them was individually created. And so that means that each single one of them committed that sin personally. They chose to go against God. Those, from the, all those angels that were created, those one third of them that fell, each one of them committed that mortal sin and went against God. Whereas with us, we, we incurred the fault through Adam. We received Adam's nature and therefore received original sin on our souls. So greater clarity, they had greater clarity than men. Men were tempted, the angels were not, and we inherited the sin. And finally, no man would ever get a chance to enter heaven. Had our Lord Jesus Christ not come on this earth, each and every one of us would never get a chance to enter, enter into heaven. Every descendant of Adam would be destined for hell. Whereas we know with the angels, at least two thirds of them put their will with God. They went with God and didn't follow Satan into hell. This is the wisdom and mercy of God then that he made himself man for us in order to save us. Do we understand this redemption, the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ became man in order to save us? Without him, we would not get to heaven. We would not be called sons of God. and We would never be happy. Without our Lord Jesus Christ, we would not be able to be saved. For when man sinned, 
He sinned against God, the infinite God. And a sin against God is an infinite offense. An infinite offense is not able to be repaid, is not able to be satisfied by a finite man. We could not repay for this satisfaction. We could not give this satisfaction of ourselves. But this satisfaction for the sin against God needed to come from man. It needed to be a man who repaid this sin, who repaid for this sin. The only way that we could be saved is if God became man. Because only God could repay for this sin. And that is what our Lord Jesus Christ did. He became man, like us in everything except sin, and paid for this offense against God. It is through him we are saved. It is the only way. Without him we would have no hope. But he became man. And for this reason, the church asks us today to rejoice. Rejoice, I say again, rejoice. St. Paul and the church want us to rejoice because our Lord became man. Without him, we would have no hope. The one sin of Adam would have sent the whole human race to hell. But now we have our Lord Jesus Christ. We have him becoming man in order to save us. And Christ gave us, God gave us this time. He gave us this chance to repent. Unlike the fallen angels. The fallen angels had no second chance. But we, we were given this chance by God when he became man. And not even that, but when we look at our own lives. How many days, weeks, months, even years maybe, we spent in the state of mortal sin. And yet God gave us this chance. He gave us this time to repent, to turn to him, to see that he is there to save us. And he gave us this time, unlike the angels. Rejoice, I say again to you, rejoice, for this is the cause of our salvation, that our Lord Jesus Christ became man. And this is what we are preparing for, this advent again, this birth, this incarnation, wherein Christ saved us. How then can we thank our Lord us weak, infinite, weak, finite creatures. How can we thank our Lord for, be, for, having becoming man, for having become man? The least we can do this Advent is to cooperate with the graces that he wants to give us. The graces that he wants to give us this Christmas. These graces that were paid with such a price of his precious blood. And in order to, to cooperate with these graces... We must stay away from worldly things, the materialistic aspect of Christmas. That is not the true reason for Christmas. St. Paul in the epistle tells us today, keep your hearts and minds on our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the only thing that matters. And even more so this Christmas, keeping our hearts and minds in him, preparing for his coming, thanking him for coming to save us. He is the reason for our rejoicing, not this materialistic worldview of Christmas. Do we even know what Christmas is about? It is about our Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, we can thank our Lord by spreading this joy. We are blessed to be Catholic. It is the reason for us to rejoice. We are Catholic. We have the one true faith. And we, like God, we desire that all be saved. So we must spread out this joy, being instruments of God, being instruments of his joy in this world, in this world full of darkness, this world who does not know Jesus Christ. Like in the gospel today, when the Pharisees came to St. John, he said, there is one, of, one who stands in the midst of you whom you know not. How many people in this world do not know Jesus Christ and what he stands for? This is our job. This is our job then to spread, spread this joy, this true joy of Christmas. We cannot keep it to ourselves. Our families, our friends, our co-workers who do not know who Jesus Christ is. It is our job to let them know who Jesus Christ is. 
Firstly, by praying for them, but then by being that good example, maybe inviting them to Mass, giving them a miraculous medal, being, being that instrument of God. So then as we return back to the altar, let us thank God for this incarnation. Let us thank God for giving us the Mass, for he repeats that incarnation every time at Mass again. And let us prepare this Christmas as if it were our last, for we don't know when our last Christmas will be. But if we prepare everyone as our last, we will have no regrets. And let us, as St. Paul says, let us keep our hearts and minds on our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.